Welcome to FT Markets. We're at the FT's Debt Capital Market Conference in London, and with me to discuss the quantitative easing program that the European Central Bank has just launched is Peter Pratt, who's an executive board member of the ECB. Peter, welcome to our conference. Good morning. Um, you've been uh, talking about um, the uh, program that you launched on January the 22nd uh, and the reasons why you launched uh, QE in the Eurozone. Um, interested to, very, to know what your impression is of the impact so far. Are you happy with the reaction we've had from financial markets? Yes, I would say so far so good. We have to put these measures in the context of previous measures that we took. Uh, we call them the credit easing measures that we took, which uh, produced some of the effects, but not the whole you range of effects. Yeah. Yes, we had credit easing measures before, you know, between June and October. We also cut the rates. Uh, we, to some extent, uh, these measures produce effects. For example, the lending rates have fallen very significantly in stressed countries. Uh, but we thought also we had to complement these measures for with our asset purchase program. You said you're happy with the results so far. Well, how do you uh, base that and what have you seen? That well, I think, I think the, first <coughs> the first point is that the markets correctly anticipated uh, that we would take that decision uh, based on what we call our reaction function. We, ex we explained to the markets what would be the conditions under which we would take additional measures and markets anticipated rightly the measures we would take. So the market prices reflect or a part of the uh, measures that we are going to implement next, next month. Now we're going to see, so far so good, uh, and now we are finalizing the technical you know, preparation to uh, start the purchases in March. We've seen quite a sharp fall in the euro. We've also seen very sharp fall in eurozone government bond yields. Would you imagine that process to go further as you actually start buying bonds? I think it's, it's difficult to tell. I mean, what, what is clear is that we have a different pace you know, of monetary policies uh, between different regions of the world. Here what we signal very clearly is that we are going to stay in an accommodative uh, stance in monetary policy over an extended period of time. This is what we signal with the uh, asset purchase program. Uh, and also we, we expect you know, uh, important portfolio rebalancing uh, effects uh, given the size of the program. That's driving up other financial markets, obviously. But wh when do you think it's going to change inflation expectations? I mean, crucially, that's what matters. Well, there are different, there are different measures, of course, of inflation expectations. In the short term, we will see how they react. You see market-based inflation, market inflation expectations have not reacted very much, although they've increased a little bit. For example, the price of protection against deflation has fallen as a result of the measures we announced. But still, it's a little bit too early to tell. What we know is that the context in which we came with the measure is quite favorable because we have these oil prices, much weaker oil prices now. And I think it was essential to uh, give very strong signal in terms of uh, willingness to anchor inflation expectations. Um, you're, um, in effect, the ECB's chief economist in your job at the uh, bank. Um, when do you expect to see a real signs of a turnaround in the Eurozone economy? Well, I think we see the turning point already. When we came with the credit easing Thanks measures, security. well, when we came with the credit easing measures in, in June and then in October, we saw that the economy was losing momentum. Now, uh, we start to see uh, better positive signs, not only on the real economy, but also in terms of lending, uh, the lending conditions, for example. Uh, money supply has clearly turned up, up credit also. Uh, so uh, we see this uh, economy regaining momentum. Uh, this is what we have been seeing recently. So I think the context in the which we came with the measure is going to good, give a very good push to this recovery. Okay, the big uncertainty, of course, I have to mention it, Greece. How big a problem is that going to be for the Eurozone economic recovery? Well, uh, I think you're right. I mean, there are a number of uncertainties around still. So there are clouds, I would say, around. So not only uh, this situation that you, you mentioned, but also there are geopolitical risks around. So this situation, we have to see how it evolves. They're not favorable factors, obviously, uh, but on Greece, uh, the dialogue is ongoing, so we will see what, uh, what will be the conclusions. Are you confident there will be a deal over Greece? Well, uh, it's uh, too early to tell what will be the conclusion, but I can only say that the dialogue is ongoing. The European Central Bank, of course, has a crucial role in supporting Greek banks by providing liquidity and allowing emergency liquidity, but that depends on Greece remaining within a program. How great is the ECB's patience? Well, I wouldn't call it patient. I mean, uh, there are very clear rules in terms of e emergency liquidity assistance. It's always for solvent bank. And so we are going to apply the rules as they are. We did it in the past in a flexible way, but it is key that the banks benefiting from emergency liquidity assist uh, assistance remain solvent. Peter, thank you very much. Thank you.